Hello everybody, my name is Raina Jacobskin and today we're going to be talking about parallax scrolling. So first off, what is parallax scrolling? I didn't know what it was when I first read it. Parallax scrolling is essentially, um, it's a method that we can use to create some physical depth in our web pages. And the way we can do this is by um, using multiple elements as foregrounds and backgrounds on our web pages. Um, these different elements will move at different speeds as the user scrolls, and this will create an effect of physical depth. Uh, and with enough layers, you could actually get a 3D effect. Important things to know. There are definitely advantages to parallax scrolling. Um, so if you want to implement parallax scrolling, it's a great idea because a user on your website will actually be pulled into your website by this feature. It's a user will they'll feel like they have a certain power to change the fabric of your website because as they scroll, they actually change how each element renders in their view. So it's, it's, it's very, um, it makes them feel like they have a lot of power. And this engaging aspect will make your user want to explore your website even further and see what other cool features you might have. All good things must come with the bad, so there are a couple of disadvantages to parallax scrolling. One of them is that there are longer lo page loading times. So if you're looking to optimize your code, make it run as fast as possible, probably not a good idea to implement parallax scrolling. It's also really difficult to uh, implement responsive design for parallax scrolling. So, um, I mean, it is possible. You could make parallax scrolling um, possible on mobile devices. However, it's usually just a lot easier to make a separate mobile device um, in this case. And a really good thing to keep in mind when you want to implement parallax scrolling is that less is more. So you don't want your elements moving at drastically different speeds across your screen because it becomes distracting rather than engaging. So, um, and it, be it becomes an unpleasant experience for your user. OK, so I'm going to show you how to implement parallax scrolling. But I know that when I first read about parallax scrolling, I was kind of confused about it, and I didn't really understand exactly what it looked like until I saw an example of it. So I have a demo that I want to show you guys. I put this together for you. And I want you to see my background is this picture here of the uh, hot air balloons, and my foreground is the simple parallax scrolling. So see how these um, elements move in comparison to each other. See how my background is moving slower, slower than uh, my text is. Simple parallax scrolling is engaging, visually mind-blowing, <laughs> and undoubtedly awesome. <laughs> so hopefully you guys got a better idea of what parallax scrolling is from that uh, basic demo. OK, so how do we implement our parallax scrolling? I learned how to do it with ScrollerJS. And what ScrollerJS is, it's a JavaScript library that allows us to animate our CSS properties depending uh, on, on elements, depending on uh, where the element is located in the user's viewport. We could use Scroller in conjunction with HTML data attributes to uh, control how our CSS properties render. Scroller is really e super easy to set up. All you have to do is download it off of GitHub, include it in a script tag in your HTML, and then just initialize it with scroller.init. And that's all you need to do with, this, with scroller. After that, it's pretty much all in your HTML, uh, data attributes, and no more scroller. So with data attributes in our HTML, we basically um, define a space in the viewport where we want a certain CSS property to occur. And they could be really difficult to read. It took me a while to understand how to read them. And uh, I have a tip that might help you guys understand. What I like to do is I like to read starting from the end of the attribute first. So for example, if we have a data attribute data bottom top, I would start from the end. So I would say, when the top of my element reaches the bottom of the user's viewport, I want this CSS property to occur. As a second example, when we have data center top, when the top of our element reaches the center of the viewport, we want this CSS property to occur. Now, if we put both of th these attributes together on the same element, we would see that while uh, the user is scrolling downward, this element would also be scrolling downward. 
So that's really as easy as it is to implement parallax scrolling. It's mostly data attributes and CSS properties, which we already know. Um, this example here is great. I'm going to show it to you in a moment. This is great because it uses nine layers in its parallax scrolling features. So it really creates um, an illusion of the three dimensions. Like you could almost reach into the screen and uh, reach into the view. It's a video game called Firewatch that I've never heard of before. But you can see here that when we scroll, these nine layers are moving at different speeds to make it appear like there is a background all the way, far, far mountains, and then a foreground right here in front of us. So that was, I thought was an excellent um, example of parallax scrolling. And that's all. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the parallax scrolling examples, and I hope you're inspired to implement parallax scrolling in your future projects.